Hello, good morning, well, good afternoon, and all praises go to Yahshua HaMashiach and the Most High. I come to you because I want to speak on the heart of men. This is the title of this video, The Heart of Men. Um, so basically, what this is to show you is to show you that the Bible, you no, know, especially state the state of the man and of the heart. Because... A lot of people like to misconstrue or don't understand what the sermon is. So when you talk about the covenant that we have with Christ is the circumcision of the heart. That means everything we do is based on your heart. Your heart dictates how you live, how you think, what your agreement with and everything. So I picked a couple um, Bible verses to... Um, to put out there so I can show you exactly what the Bible means when it talk about the heart. And this is a lot of different, I mean, different things we're going to get into. But I'm trying to pull something up on my laptop because I like this verse as well. But I'm going to say this a little bit later. But we're going to start with Matthew 15, 19, where it states, For the heart, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, Adulteries, fornication, theft, fault witness, and blasphemies. So we talk about the heart. We talk about the core values of human beings. No matter how you live or what you think or what you perceive, it all starts with your heart first. This was the problem in the old covenant because they were living out the flesh that regardless what they're doing, their heart was never right or in the right place. You know what I mean? So if we go to Proverbs 25, 26, it say, He that is proud heart stir up strife, but he that put his, his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusts in his own heart is a fool, but he who walks, who he, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. So that's telling you again, it's your heart that's going to be the problem. See, a lot of people like to put confusion and say oh god ain't this god ain't that but our problem is we fail to sit back and notice what are we do are we living wrong are we the product of our environment do what we call right is actually right or is it actually wrong it's selfish and all the you no know, things that we perceive as human behavior is these the right way to treat people or the right way to go about how we live on our day-to-day -day life and according to scripture if you're a believer then if you don't have the circumcision of the heart, then you're not following Christ. And how do you tell the circumcision of the heart? It's because of the way you live. I'm going to repeat in Matthew 15, 19. Again, it says, from out the heart, perceive evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, fault witness, blasphemies. That right there lets you know that just because you walk in, in human form, if you're not following your heart, this is where everything's come from. So when people say, oh, God know me, God know my heart, exactly he do. Because he know out of your heart perceive all these adulterous and fault witness and all these other things that are considered, considered evil to the Bible will keep you out of the presence of the Most High. So the heart is really the problem with men and really the problem with people nowadays because you do what's in your heart. Now, at the end of the day, you can't lie what's in your heart. You can tell me a lot of stuff. You can say a lot of things. But your heart perceives on what you believe and how you choose to live on this planet. So if we go to Jeremiah 17, 9. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. Again, this is telling you that your heart has to be in the right place because through your heart perceives the evilness and the wickedness of intentment that you have. So once your mind and the heart get in agreement, this is what produces sin in a physical form, no matter if it's murder, fornication. Once your mind, this is why you got to meditate on the word and this is why the Bible tells you bring every thought into captivity because this is where Cain fell. Cain didn't bring every thought to captivity, so he let that marinate to his heart, got an agreement, and then it came out in the form of sin as murder. So we go to Luke 12, 33 to 34. It states, Sell that ye have, 
and give on. Provide yourself with bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heaven that do not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. So that right there is for all these people that think you can put faith and store up all this treasure on earth when you're not supposed to put faith in that. Yes, we supposed to have a house because we got to live. You don't want to be homeless. Unless you need a car because you're grown, you got responsibility, you need to take care of stuff. God knows you need money to pay your bills. He knows you need to live. But what he's telling you is the same thing Jesus told that man who came and asked him that he was following the law since his life. What else did him need to do? And Jesus told him to give, to take all his possessions and sell it, give it to the poor, pick up his cross and follow him. Bro walked away crying. Why? Because that's where his heart was with his treasure on the earth. You cannot be so caught up in the physical material things on this planet that your heart get caught up more with that than with God. Once you do that, you have committed a sin. This is why Jesus told you that you, that you should not love the world till you lose your soul. Because most people will love the things, the money, the cars, all the things that come with pleasure in the flesh more than working with the heart and walking in spirit. You know what I mean? And this is where people get confused. And this is where a lot of people... Don't want to accept it because it's no way out of here once you agree to this circumcision of the heart. There's no more excuses on how you live or how you walk. You either right or you're wrong. It's no in between. Once God put this covenant in your heart, the law in your heart, there's no way you can say, oh, God know my heart so you can live by your foolishness. Yeah, he do know your heart and he know a lot of foolishness come attached to you. That's why he sent Christ so you can get rid of that foolishness and can't use that as an excuse not to live right. Because he know what you're doing is your own evil desire. You're doing what's in your heart. You're doing what you think is right for you. So you don't want to do what God say. You want to make God do what you say. So I don't want to fit the Bible. I want God to fit me. And this is most what people do. They mix the world with the scripture because you don't want to go completely with God. You want some of the world and you want some of the scripture. And the Bible tells us we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve two masters. So when you walk around putting more faith in, in, in the job, in the hours, and, and, and buying big houses. and if, Okay, I'm coming. And invest in this stuff and keep investing in this stuff, but you're not realizing that you're setting yourself up for failure because you're not storing your treasure in heaven, you're storing your treasure here on earth like the Egyptians did. Like when they try to bury all that gold and money with them, that's their heart store on their treasure, on their money, their wealth on earth. If you live that way, you cannot get into heaven. Christ will reject you because your heart is not with him or the most high. It is with the wicked things that is of this earth and this physical possession on what we call materialistic things. So if we go to Luke 6.45, right? And they say, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. I'm going to repeat that. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. That tell you right there, bro. You can't hide from this. You can't sit here and say, God know my heart so you can justify your ways of living wrong. Because you feel like you go to church once a week and you give tithes that you can do whatever you want. And then on Sunday when you get your money, you and Jesus cool. It don't work that way. Because you're following your heart of wickedness. You're bringing out the evil treasure of your heart. Your heart is set on evil treasure here on this earth. It's not set on good things. Because if you had good things, then you would do good things. So when I sit here and I discern and I listen to people, I listen to what you say and how you live and how you talk and how you think. Because that let me know where your heart is at. It let me know if your heart filled with treasure in heaven or your heart filled with treasure on earth. So if all you talk about is getting money, if all you talk about 
is, is how you could come up or or putting this and putting faith in this. And I don't see nothing about Christ in it. I know you living for the world. You're not living for scripture. You're not living for Christ. You're living for your own heart, which produce your own wickedness. And this is exactly what this get. This is exactly what it get. A good man put treasure of his heart, bring forth, which is good. If I practice, which is good. If I think and believe that faith, which is good, that what that be my fruits of my life. But if I think wicked, if I got evil wickedness in my heart, that means I want to manipulate people. I want to get over on people. I only think of myself, which is selfish. I only want to get more, which is greed. I don't want to listen to nobody. I want to do what I want to do. That is pride. These is all the wickedness of human behavior which come forth from the heart, which God completely tell you that this right here is what's going to keep you out, out of heaven. Because your treasure is not stored up high in the heaven, it's stored down low here on earth. Did not Satan tempt Jesus to give Jesus all the, the, the wealth and, the, and, the, and, the, um, and all the kingdoms of the earth? Did he not tempt Satan? Did Satan not tempt Jesus with that? This is the same contract these people have today. That day-to-day -day people making covenants with Satan because they taking this deal of the fame, of the wealth, and the fortunes of this world and rejecting Christ. And we follow these celebrities and this is why they pay these celebrities so much money for their influence is to get you to follow the treasures of the world and not seek the most high. Because he will get you caught up in what you don't have. He'll get you caught up in things you probably will never will get. Because you're looking at a few, a small few that made it through and probably sold out to get what they got. This is why God tell us don't worry about what a man got because you don't know what he did to get that. You know what I mean? So I can't be upset or be following jealous of what you got because I don't know what you did to get what you got. Because the people of the world follow their heart. They follow the treasure that they set here on the earth. They set up these countries and they set up all this wickedness in these systems to get people to follow the system. Had them in the system with no knowledge of what they actually doing. This is the definition of the matrix. So we can even go to Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, right? And it says... Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. First, this is for all you, you Hebrew temps and all you Hebrew Israelites that don't understand the Bible, that you're supposed to come into Christ. If you don't come into Christ, if you're still in the law of Moses, practicing the Torah, you're going to get left behind. I'm going to start over again. Behold, the days come, said the done, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. I'm going to repeat. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day I took them by hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt with my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after these days, said the Lord, I will put my law in the inward parts and write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. In their hearts, he will write his law. Not of the flesh, not working out of towards the more. Did he not just say that he that he not going to give you, he's going to give you a different covenant than the one he gave you? So that let you know the old covenant, the Torah, the law of Moses had been fulfilled because he's talking about putting the law in your heart, which is Christ. And he shall and God will be their people and they shall teach no more man, his neighbor and every man, his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from least of them until the greatest of them said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So this right here specifically lets you know that this covenant that he's bringing, that it will be in your hearts and not of the flesh, not of the, the Torah, the law of Moses. So anybody who professing that you, that Christ can't save you or that, you know what I mean, you, you have to practice the law of Moses, they don't know what they're talking about. 
Because the problem with the Hebrew Israelite is that they were so caught up in their bloodline and then they flesh during the ritual that they thought they were too righteous to be saved. So they didn't need Christ because they thought that their law and their works made them righteous. This is why we not, this is why the New Testament Pacific say we do not live by works. We do not get in heaven by what we do. We get in heaven by faith, by the grace of the Most High, by believing in Christ. This is how we get into heaven. This is how we get into heaven. So I'm also going to read this. It's a little long, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. It's Proverbs 1 through 29. Now this right here is going to tell you exactly the state of mind of men, where we get in this country. And the state of mind of all you governors and politicians and everybody who's going out and voting. Remember, when you vote, you're in agreement. That means whatever these people decide to do, whether you know it or not, you agree to it when you went and vote for them people. Now, we're going to start this off, right? It say, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to receive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and equality. Hold on, hold on. I might have the wrong thing. Yeah, I got the wrong thing. I'm I'm sorry about that. Let me re redo that. I got the wrong thing. I'm in the wrong one. Here we go. I got the right one now. Here we go. He that being often reapproved hardened his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. I'm gonna repeat. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear fruit, the people mourn. If not the wicked bear rule, it's not the people mourn. Are we not crying out? All right, let's keep going. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoices his father. But he keepeth company of harlots, spendeth his substance. The king of judgment established the land. But he that received gift overthroweth it. A man that flattered his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of evil men there is a snare, but the righteous doeth sing and rejoice. The righteous consider the cause of the poor, but the wicked regarded not to know it. Do that sound like us? The righteousness consider the cause of the poor, but the wicked regarded not to know it. Scornful men be, bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contended with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. That let you know, don't deal with the foolish. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Mm -mm -mm. A fool uttereth all his mind. But a wise man keepeth it till afterwards. If a ruler hearkens to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The done lighteth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The ride and the real proof give wisdom, but the child left to himself bringeth his mother shame. They're talking about all you, all you, 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 you see that? Do you see that? When the wicked are, hold on, hold on, I bet. The rod and real proof give wisdom. But the child left to himself bringing his mother shame. All you people not taking care of your kids, that's, that's for y'all right there. You bringing shame on everybody. You bringing shame on your mama, you bringing shame, bro. That let you know, bro. You, 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 y'all, I'm telling you, man, y'all ain't living right, man. I'm gonna keep going, though. I ain't gonna say, I'm gonna keep going. When the wicked are multiplied, transgressions increase, but the righteous shall see their fault. When the wicked multiply, is that not where we at? Transgressions increase, is that not where we at? Correct thy son, correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law happy is he. This country do not have no vision. We on the road to perishing. 
Bruh, this telling you exactly the state where we at, yo. <laughs> a servant will will not be corrected by words. For though he under for though he understand he will not answer. See as though a man that is hasty in his word, there is more hope of a fool than of him. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at length. You got that right? An angry man stirred up strife, and a furious man abandoned in his abideth in his transgressions. A man's pride shall bring him low. A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. I'm telling you, man, this is where we at. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and bewareth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso put his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. What? Men seek ruler's favor. Keep going out here trying to seek the favor of men now. Keep going. But every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Just let you know man have no control or rule over you, dude. Your judgment don't come from man on earth. It comes from the most high. An, un an unjust man is an abomination to the just. An abomination to the just. And he that is upright in his way is an abomination to the wicked. I'm going to repeat that. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. Why? Because you like to do stuff we don't believe nor do we want to live. And this is where I'm at. I can't follow these men no more. I can't follow America. None of this stuff because their heart is wicked. Their heart not in the right place, dude. And this is why, why we never be able to have a movement that actually sustained because we had no movement without no spirit. We never had a Christ-led movement in this country. It all been false flags. Even though Martin Luther King was a Christian believer of God, his movement came from the philosophy of a race of a, of a, of a racist. And then if you actually do your history, Malcolm X didn't like Martin Luther King because he was getting funded for some of the movements. And the day Martin Luther King woke up and started speaking about the true powers at B that controlling this nation, they killed him. I'm going to read the last part again for you now. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. This is why in the last days, they're going to get rid of everybody who believe in Christ, man. Because we are in the way of the wicked because the way we live go against the world, man. The Bible is telling you this. Your heart is not in the right place. You cannot live for Christ if your heart is in the materialistic things of this world. If you are following man, we don't follow man. And it's to the point where these people so wrapped up in the men in the church that if the pastor fall or make a mistake, the church fall off. Like, just because you fall don't mean I fall. We supposed to follow Christ, not each other. I might listen to you and hear you out and because and you have some good information, you good in spirit, you good, and you really anointed with the word. But I'm not following people when I follow Christ. Because men heart perceive evil thoughts. Men heart perceive it wickedness, murder, adultery, fornication, molestation. Pedophilia, homosexuality, we can go on and on. The heart of men is corrupt, dude. And everybody who don't have the Lord in their life, don't have the done, Yahshua HaMashiach in their life will practice the wickedness of this world. There's no in between, there's no gray area. Either you on the left side or you on the right side. Your heart will tell what side you on. This is why I listen to people. This is why I let people speak. Because from your mouth proceeded from your heart, man. You know what I mean? So we can't get so caught up in ourselves 
that we forget how we supposed to live. And you got a lot of people in the church that so caught up in themselves and in the religion of church. Because I'm be honest with you. Most people who follow what we call modern day Christianity actually follow the Roman Catholic Church. You're not following the Bible. All the holidays you have, it's come from the Roman Catholic Church. It don't come from the Bible. Your country was never built on Bible or Christianity value. It was built on the rituals of Freemasonry. So, you can sit here, you can make all the excuses in the world. But I'm just letting you know. According, to, and this just a few examples, there's plenty more in scripture to let you know, bro. Your heart is the key success to if you're going to live for the world or you're going to live for Christ. Your heart can't do both. You're either going to be on one or both sides. If you're trying to be stuck in the middle, you're going to be on the left outside anyway. So, I mean, I just wanted to come give you that because a lot of people don't understand, man, that the way we live... We don't live this way for people. We live this way for the Most High. That means when nobody's not around, the Most High is still watching me, so I still live correctly and walk correctly regardless of who around me or who's not around me. Now, I mean, when we talk about judgment, it's not to judge the world because the Bible tells me judgment starts at the house of the Lord. So if we got somebody, we don't worry about how they live or what their behavior is like. We help them out as much as we can. We wash them with the Word. But we don't agree or become an enabler to the behavior. That's not what I'm saying. I can bring you in my circle and I can show you love and then I watch you with the word, but I don't have to follow you. That's like when I go to work, I get along with everybody on my job because the love of Christ let me love every human being no matter what they believe in or no matter the human behavior. But once we leave off that job, my life totally different from the way you choose to live. I'm going home to follow Christ. You going home to do something the way of the world. That separates us right there. So my love for Christ keep me right and keep me with respect and able to show love to human beings. But I do not follow human beings, dude. I don't follow human beings. I follow Christ. But I can still love you because Christ loves you the same way I can love you, the same way God can love you. We all love but we don't be an enabler, nor do we accept your behavior. And just like my son, I love my son dearly. But that don't mean I got to agree with every behavior he have. And that's why I think the homosexual community is getting misunderstood too. Is that they, when we say we disagree with their behavior, they take that as a swipe and saying we hate y'all. Or we got to be, we not hating y'all. I don't hate you. But I don't have to agree with your behavior. I can still love you as a person and still disagree with your behavior. If you're a parent, you disagree with a lot of behaviors of your child, but that don't mean you don't love the child. <laughs> so it's all about the heart. What do you perceive? What do you say? And without discernment, this is why a lot of people get misled because they don't have true discernment. They get caught up and let the world tell them, oh, only, only God can judge me. You let people say that, and then this is how you end up getting into this, this Christ consciousness and all this chakra and this yoga stuff and opening all this stuff and doing the stuff that God tell you you're not supposed to do because it's leading your heart away from the most high. Follow Christ. Read your Bible. Follow people who are following Christ, not following man. You know what I mean? And... No, I just wanted to, to bring that to you because, like I say, man, it's a lot of things that we don't understand because we don't want to humble ourselves every day in front of the Lord. We don't want to say that the Lord way is right and our way is wrong because he also state that in the Bible where he said, man, say my ways are unequal, but your ways are unequal. No, I mean, this is why man love to do it these in the dark because he think it these is not seen. No, I mean, if I can't trust your heart, I can't trust you as a person. And that's where I'm at because I'm I'm ready, you no, know, I'm willing, and I'm gonna keep going in this every day until the rest of my life. You no, know, this is my life now. So I just pray all y'all find joy and happiness and all y'all find Christ in this chaotic time. You no, know, we living in some dangerous time. Look like we about to head into a civil war too. You no, know, only thing I can tell you is that. You know, the Bible teaches me that I can't save Babylon. I can't save this nation. Only thing I can do is save myself and the people of this nation who have an ear to hear and who want to hear the word of God and be saved and walk out of Babylon. You cannot save this country. Voting, you go ahead, do what you want. 
Hey, I don't tell you how to live, bro. You, like I said, I don't judge you or condemn you. Y'all can go do what y'all want. Nah, man. But just know you in agreement with the wickedness of this nation because the people on this nation do not follow Christ. The people over this nation do not follow the Bible. Period. They don't. They follow the teachings and the commandments and the traditions of men. They follow their own heart, which, as I told you, which what the heart of man was talking about is deceitful and misguided. And it will misguide you and have you going down the wrong road. Because the Bible tells us the path to hell is wide, but the path to heaven is narrow because most people will not find it because most people are going to go the way of the world. You're going to get confused with all this spirituality stuff, which ain't nothing but flexual works. They tell you it's spiritual. Well, if it's spiritual, why everything I got to do got to be coming out the flesh? Even if you try to open your third eye, your pineal gland, you got to put work in to do that. Maruka was a vizier, the king T in Egypt. He went to school for 40 years. The open his third eye, you ready to go to school for 40 years? <laughs> That's a lot of work, ain't it? <laughs> so you can say what you want. I mean, you can do what you want. No, that's the, the beautiful thing of free will, but I'm just letting you know, man, God watching your heart. Christ was sent to give you a circumcision of the heart. So all you Hebrew Israelite, y'all better read Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. It speak specifically on the new covenant and not the old covenant. If you actually understand the Bible, the Christ was, was prophesied to come since the fall of Adam and Eve, man. So I'm just saying, man, you no. Know, all blessing and glory go to Yahshua HaMashiach the Most High. I hope y'all got something out of here, man. Enjoy your day and stay blessed. One love.